Well, I think that there are quite a few owners of large data sets that are interested in licensing works in their collection to generative AI companies. And OpenAI has made quite a few voluntary licensing arrangements uh, with some um, holders of, uh, so OpenAI, for example, has a, has a deal with uh, Shutterkot um, uh, to allow the use of images from uh, its database of, uh, of images, uh, mostly photographs, I think. And, you know, great if that, um, if a voluntary licensing regime um, works for those entities to, um, uh, as a private matter, I think that's fine. Um, I think the, the kind of the mandate that everything be licensed um, is something that is kind of unrealistic. Um, and I understand that Europeans who have um, had collective licenses um, in their experience uh, within copyright works uh, makes a lot of sense um, to them uh, because there's much less collective licensing in the US uh, than in the EU. I think it's a more foreign concept uh, for us, but let me give you some examples of why I think this is um, not such an easy thing to do even for the EU, right? So when it comes to a lot of the collective licenses, let's say um, making copies of, uh, photocopies of um, book chapters, articles, etc. okay? There are collective licenses um, uh, that allow people to make those copies and they just have to uh, provide some remuneration for it. Well, that's only, for this kind of work, for this kind of author, um, and um, and only then for the people who have signed up with for the with the collecting society, um, do they typically get any kind of compensation? Um, uh, but what you have is a licensing regime which is based on the exploitation of the of the copyright through acts of reproduction. When it comes to training data, most of the training data is stuff that's out on the internet. Stuff that's out on the internet has been copied by Common Crawl and search engines and other entities for I think 17 years without any kind of issue being raised whatsoever. And now all of a sudden, ooh, um, uh, you have to get a license to do something where the information is like out there in the internet um, uh, and available for free. So we don't, I think, you know, there have been times uh, where uh, people have tried to use different theories about um, copying stuff on the internet. Uh, so one theory was, trespass to computer, right? If I have certain data on a computer and you come in and you copy stuff off my computer, then you're using my computing resources and I didn't give you permission to do that. So that's a trespass to um, my computer resources. And while there were one or two cases that thought that was a pretty good theory, most of the cases just said, that's really dumb. Uh, that's a really bad theory. Um, uh, another theory has been um, that, you know, the, that when you put stuff up on the internet, you authorize people to use it for uh, certain purposes and not for others. But, you know, when, it, when you're doing kind of common crawl, you can't tell, you know, what you, you know, what the, what common crawl and other entities that basically, uh, crawl the web, no, is that if there isn't a robots TXT um, uh, header that says don't, don't index this, then, you know, it's okay to do. So 
also there's this problem of changing uh, changing things, uh, changing the rules kind of like now. Okay, so yesterday this was completely legal. And today, oh, we decided copyright um, uh, makes this uh, illegal. Well, like it was like legal for like 16 or 17 years. And all of a sudden we decide to make it illegal. Really? Um, that sort of seems a little weird. Um, another thing that, you know, the collective license idea doesn't really pay attention to uh, is that we're talking about billions of works. We're talking about billions of authors. We're talking about, um, about a lot of things that essentially have no commercial value, but how is some collecting society supposed to figure out, you know, here's 25 cents to you, here's 35 cents to you, here's a nickel to you. Um, There's just no metric, right? Um, and it seems to me that, you know, also if you kind of think, well, this will get, this will mean that authors will be able to like, you know, continue to make a living. It's like, we're talking about really small change here in terms of each author uh, entitlement. It's not like you're gonna get $10,000 a year or $50,000 a year from OpenAI um, because they trained on your novel um, uh, five years ago. It's just not gonna happen. Um, so it's, you know, the kind of the metrics um, are really very, very problematic here. Um, also, you know, the, there are certain models that are retrained on a, on a periodic basis, but many of the models that are out there are ones where here's the training data set Here's the model. Once I've trained the model, I don't use the data set anymore, right? So it's a kind of, if, if what you're trying to do is a collective license for the training data, well, okay, here's 25 cents for the use of your work as training data, but the model doesn't contain the training data, okay? So, you'd have to kind of come up with another theory about how do you get money from the maker of the model, given that the training data set over here may not actually be a commercial entity. Now it may be, but it may not be. You just don't know. And also I'm the person who developed the model, but somebody else actually developed the training data set. So the kind of like figuring out all of the metrics and also most of the kind of collecting uh, collective licensing things in the past have been here's the collecting society for authors of literary works and here's the collecting society for music and here's the collecting society for images okay we're talking about every type of data we're not talking about one type of data and so you know, I can imagine all the collecting societies will say, well, me, 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 I'll, I'm happy to take money and give it away. Um, but I don't see how it's really feasible to do that. So um, again, practical difficulties. I kind of understand the, the, the rationale for it and I have some sympathy for it. I just think that it's so impractical that it's just not, not really feasible. And you know, I'm, I'm an American, so feasibility and like, does it work in the world um, actually matters to me.